Hi, and welcome to the Reiki from the Farm podcast brought to you by me, Pam Allen LeBlanc from Hidden Brook Farm. I am a scientist, a businesswoman, and a licensed Reiki master teacher with the International Center for Reiki Training. Each week in this podcast, you'll be entertained as you learn about a wide variety of relevant Reiki topics, helping you become a more knowledgeable and effective Reiki practitioner. We caution you, though, this podcast may also dramatically improve your life, and we are so happy that you're here. On this week's podcast, I am talking with my friend and student, Krista Krista Sartoris. Welcome, Krista. Hi, Pam. How are you? Thank you. So glad to be here. And we're talking about Reiki in animal rescue, which is a fascinating topic. Before we begin, though, I just want to let you know about some of the things that we have coming up. December 28th, we have a Dream It, Do It goal setting workshop. This is three hours in the evening of how to create goals, balance goals for all aspects of your life, and then how to accomplish them. This is something that my daughter pointed out I'm really good at, and she said, Mom, teach people how you always accomplish your goals. You don't have New Year's resolutions that you don't meet. Like you, instead you have concrete goals throughout the year. Can you teach people how to do that? So we wanted to offer it just before the new year to help you all with those resolutions and those things that you just want to accomplish in your life. So join us for that if it speaks to you. January 17th, 24th, and 31st from 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern time, We are teaching marketing intensive. So that's three Monday evenings of intensive marketing just to help you market your own business. And Kathleen and I are trying to give all of our best tips and advice to try to save you time and money and just really help you get a handle on your marketing. We offered the course last June. It was sold out. We had tremendous students who had tremendous results. And uh, if any of those students want to join us again, you're welcome to join at half the, but we'd love to have you join us for that. And I'd also like to let you know about a Fredericton SPCA event. And we'll talk a little bit more about this in the podcast that we're holding on January 18th called Beyond the Actually, what is it called? Beyond the Reiki Gateway or the, no, the Reiki Bridge. The Rainbow Bridge. Beyond the Rainbow Bridge. Thank you, Krista. A heartfelt (laughs) meeting with Fredericton SPCA. Our Fredericton SPCA is struggling right now to meet their financial commitments. And so we're just trying to do anything that we can to help them. And in that event, that heartfelt evening with the Fredericton SPCA. It's going to be two hours in Fredericton at the Tom Morrison Theater, where I walk people through the mysteries of the animal afterlife. And I also will lead them in an animal Reiki forgiveness experience to help them release their grief. There's a lot of things the animals have taught me over the years about what the afterlife in, of, as, of being a professional animal communicator for the last 12 or 13 years that they've taught me about what happens when they pass and how it all works. And so this is just a chance to share that with you and also lead you in a meditation. If you've ever, if you have any grief from losing an animal in your life, including a two-legged or a human animal, this is an opportunity to release that and to understand how that process works. And in that event, I also will be communicating with 12 random animals that I won't have connected with before who are in the afterlife, and we'll be doing that live. And so I'd love to have you join us for that. And But I've heard from so many of you that you would like to attend. However, you're not in the Fredericton area. So Krista and I, just before this podcast, set a date for Wednesday, February 7th from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern time. We will do the same event online for the same $50 fee, which we will also be donating 
to the Fredericton SVCA. So please join us at one of those two events if you'd like to contribute. We will also put a contribution button for the Fredericton SVCA in the podcast if you'd just like to make a, a straight out donation to them this holiday season. That, of course, would be much appreciated as well. Also wanted to let you know that our deepening connections with animals, just understanding how energy can impact how you connect with the important animals in your life, will be happening on January 30th in the evening. And I have a full lineup of ICRT licensed Reiki classes from January 20th to 24th, level one and two and masters. 27th to 31st is animal Reiki one and two and masters. And in February, I've got animal communication and Karuna Reiki. Watch for our some classes in an Australian and Asian friendly time zone in February and March. And if you'd like to join us in New York at the Northeast Reiki Retreat in May or in June at the Omega Institute for a Reiki conference and also a World Peace Conference, I'm going to be teaching at both of those places. And William Rand will be teaching Karuna Reiki also at the Omega Institute in June. And if I'm able to, I'm going to be assisting him in that class. So just tons and tons of great stuff coming up, a lot of animal stuff coming up and a lot of Reiki. would love to have you join us. Krista, what have you got going on? You've got a few things in the works as well, and some of it isn't yet. The dates aren't set, but tell us a little bit about those. I have a collaboration that, that I'm doing with my friend Tracy Underhill of Transform Holistic Health. We're hosting sound baths at Brookside Wellness Center here in Fredericton. So it's guided meditation sound bath journey with group Reiki. And I have a YouTube channel, Krista Shea. I have a lot of travel blogs, uh, travel. I have a lot of travel vlogs on there okay. and more in the works. And I am on Instagram as well. Yeah, we'll put all your links and the link to your website as well in the website. podcast notes so people can reach out right. to you for any of those. Yeah, right. and you're just starting your Reiki business as well, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yes. Doing some animal Reiki sessions. Yes, I'm a traditional Usui Reiki master and I am just as of September I am an animal Reiki master <laughs> I took my I took my animal Reiki one and two with you Pam and then I did my masters just in September in Campobello where we met the wonderful humpback whales cork and chevron and yes they wouldn't leave our boat <laughs> yes. Yes. and we saw so many porpoises and a beautiful minky slice wasn't it they have names yes the, the whale watchers his they fin. yeah because he had he, his fin had been had been injured and so they call him slice and the whale watchers know all the whales and they have the names for the whales and i mentioned this and and i think another podcast but just two days after we finished our master class together krista the endangered right whales who had not been in the harbor for four years showed up and they wow. spent the rest of the season there, which was just amazing. <laughs> amazing. All that animal Reiki energy. <laughs> All that animal Reiki energy. I just love it. Yes. Well, and the orca. Oh, I was going to yeah, say go the ahead. orca. Orca was the male orca has been hanging around Grand Manan also for a lot of the season with a pod of dolphins. That is, I yes, and that's so unusual, isn't it? We didn't see him. No. But there is only one orca up in our region, and he swims with a pod of dolphins, which is incredible to me because I think dolphins are food for some orcas. And <laughs> this guy, they're both cetacean spe species, but it's to me, that's just such a neat story. And just the same as Cork and Chevron, they're two male humpbacks, I believe who just never leave each other's side. And so just evidence that all kinds of relationships exist in nature as well. 
yes. which I love. They were you would see one surface, then the other, and then one, then the other, and they actually stopped feeding to just hang around us and the energy in the boat. And Stephanie told me that they never really quite had another whale watching day that was quite like that. That never happened again wow. <laughs> for wow. the rest of the season. <laughs> Wow. I said, was that an unusual amount of activity? Because we were just surrounded by whales almost the whole time. And she said, yes, actually, it's very <laughs> it's the first time and the last time that it happened. <laughs> so we know cool. that, the, that they're loving the animal Reiki and that they hung around one of the weir fishermen that was there. Was out. He goes out to check his weirs every morning and evening. And I would see him when I would walk the dogs down to the wharf. And he told me, he told Sheila and I in between two of the days of class. So after the first day of class and before the second day, he said, it's so unusual. Those humpbacks have been out there all night. Those whales have been out there all night, like right out in front of our house. Like right He said, they didn't leave the harbor all night. So. And it's us. Just, I love it. And as soon as you started talking about your sound bath, Krista, I looked sideways because a whole flock of birds just landed in the two trees right oh. out my window. So the animals are very drawn to this energy, aren't they? Yes, they are. I yes, love it. I can feel it. Guys, we'd like to give you a little feel for animal Reiki. So we're going to start with a brief invocation today where you bring your hands together. And Krista and I are going to use our distance symbols to send you just a little taste of the animal Reiki energy. So just closing your eyes, taking a deep breath. And just feeling your heartbeat align with the heartbeat of the earth. The heartbeat of nature, the rhythms of nature, winter, spring, summer, and fall, the full moon cycles, and the energy of the elements, earth, air, water, fire. Feeling your heartbeat align with the heartbeat of the animals. Acknowledging and understanding that we are one with the animals, part of the animal kingdom here on the earth, releasing the belief in dominion over the earth or the animals, realizing that we are part of nature part of the wind in the trees, the rain, the thunderers, part of the plants that nourish us, nourish the animals that sometimes nourish us, part of the air that we breathe, that's created by the trees, connected to each other, to the animals, to the earth, releasing the belief in separation or that separation is even possible, even entertaining the understanding that we may be one organism. Hmm. Take a deep breath and just feel yourself move into alignment with nature and with the earth and with all that is. With the heartbeat of the Milky Way, the galaxy, the sun and the moon. Feel yourself align with the heartbeat of each other. All of those special people, that special breed of people who love the animals and recognizing that regardless of our cultures, upbringing, language, race, religion, and understanding, many of us can connect and can unite through a love of the animals. 
And just feeling that unification consciousness move through you now. That love of the animals and their love of you. Moving you into more alignment with the divine, the divine in you, the divine in me. And I end our invocation with namaste. The divine in me sees and recognizes the divine in you, the meaning of namaste. Thank you. Aho. And so it is. Mm. <laughs> Krista, thank you so much for... <coughs> Sorry, I was... That's okay. <coughs> Go ahead. I'll start again. Um, Krista, tell us a little bit about your journey into Reiki and also mm -hmm. the fact that you have been volunteering with rescue animals for over two decades. Is that correct? Yes. <clears throat> Tell us been... a little bit about that and then your journey into Reiki and then how that's all coming together for you. Okay. <coughs> Sorry, Pam. That's all right. <clears throat> Do you need to pause and take a drink? <clears throat> yeah. Krista, tell us a little bit about your journey into Reiki, but first, let's talk about animal rescue, because this has been a passion of yours. You started volunteering when you were 10 years old. Last year, you were the Fredericton SPCA Volunteer of the Year. So talk to us about animal rescue, and then how that led to Reiki, animal Reiki, and then how you're integrating both now. So that's a big mouthful, but go ahead and tell us a little bit about your experiences. Sure. <clears throat> yes, I've always loved animals, especially dogs. And I used to bother my mother all the time. And she finally, <clears throat> she signed me up to volunteer at the Fredericton SPCA when I was 10 years old on the weekends. She would drop me off. You're not allowed to do that anymore. <laughs> and it was simpler times though. Back then it was yeah, very different. Yes. And I would just help with the animals and I eventually started working at the Fredericton SPCA on weekends <clears throat> and I got into a dog rescue. <clears throat> I got into dog rescue and I started fostering. Actually, sorry. I worked at an animal hospital here in Fredericton for a few years and then I stopped working there. I had to, I took on a job nine to five <clears throat> excuse me, took on a nine to five job. And I started fostering at my at home in my own time for different organizations. And I just loved that so much. And I eventually got into Reiki, because uh, I had gone through struggles in life, as everyone does. And then things got really good. I feel like I'm a master manifester. I just bring, I can bring in, once I realized that I had this power <laughs> that we all have, and I would just call in what I wanted my life to be like. Mm. And I felt though that there was something that was missing and I couldn't put my finger on what it was. And I had a, my first, then I had my first Reiki session and then I had a, another Reiki session and then I was, went to another Reiki practitioner, Tracy Underhill, and I had three Reiki sessions fairly close together. And I really noticed a dramatic change in myself yeah. after those three sessions. And yeah. the way I would describe it is that I was just, I was nicer to my neighbors. I was, I, whereas I before perhaps would just come in the house and not want to, I just like, hi how are you <laughs> it just really changed who I was yeah so I've always been involved with dogs all, almost always with rescue Reiki has been fairly new probably the last six years or so and then I decided that I wanted to take my level one and two and then I heard about the animal Reiki course so oh. 
I really wanted to do that once I heard that and that there was a master's course in that. That was my goal last year. <clears throat> so I did get my Reiki master's so that I could become an animal Reiki. Yes. Yeah. And that's those are the two requirements or the prerequisites to animal Reiki master. You have to be an, an Yusui Reiki master from any lineage, any Yusui lineage and Reiki master teacher. And then you have to have had animal Reiki level one and two with us so that so that you can teach that class. And so you really probably wouldn't have gone into the master's, except that you really wanted the animal masters. <laughs> That's right. Yes. <laughs> yes, I did. I love that. And mm -hmm. what did you notice when you started? Because you've been working, doing rescue work for mm -hmm. decades now, Krista, since you were 10 years old. I'm not going to say how many decades, but you and I are about the same age. And <laughs> so people know how old I am. So <laughs> I'm giving it away. Um, and so what did you notice a difference when you started integrating Reiki with the rescue animals that you were fostering and that you were working with? Yes. Did mm -hmm. sorry, did you say did I notice? Did you notice a difference like in the with, in the, with the animals that you were working with? Because you've been um, volunteering for so long. And then once yes. you started integrating Reiki, obviously you've decided to take it all the way through to Animal Master. You must have noticed uh, that it made a difference. Yes. So in the past I've worked with animals forever. And Reiki is fairly new to me. And I was busy raising my children and everything. And once Actually, what happened was once my kids got older, I again felt that something was missing and I feel it was Reiki and I had a life purpose online Reiki session with you, Pam. Yes. And because I just, I also, again, felt like, what am I here for? What is my purpose? Although I'm definitely passionate about dogs and I had that online Reiki session to find my life purpose with you. And it was very clear to me that it was the Fredericton SPCA rescue. At the same time, a couple of years ago, I was having pain in my foot and I had gout, which is very strange because I have, I don't eat seafood and I don't eat red meat, I'm vegan. I was told that I was had a fear of stepping forward into my power. So that led me to having the online Reiki session with you for life purpose. And it was very clear that it was the Fredericton SBCA, but not just the Fredericton SBCA, just animal rescue yeah. uh, as a whole broad. In general. In general, yes. Yeah. Wow. Um, so I started getting, I put myself back out there and started getting involved with the Fredericton SPCA again. And uh, I told them that I was an animal Reiki practitioner and they were very happy to have me come and um, give Reiki to some of their dogs. And so uh, to start with, they had some pug mixes that needed, that had cruciate repairs on their knees. So they couldn't really jump around or anything that had to be kept very quiet. They had the Elizabethan collars on their heads. And right. um, so I, I went in and sat in one of the offices with two little pugs. It wasn't a bad gig at all. <laughs> and I have photos of them and right. their little cones on and their bandages on their legs and they're wrapped in blankets and they're just taking the Reiki in. I wish I had have known about Reiki 20 years ago and been a Reiki practitioner, but I didn't, when I was fostering in my own home, I wasn't aware of Reiki at that time. Not many of us were to be but, fair, Krista. Okay. It wasn't as prevalent as it is today. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So, because yeah, you found it made a big difference. Yes. Yes. And it's so relaxing for myself too. <laughs> and for them. <laughs> No, right. And there's been some research done. Kathleen Prasad, who uh, does a lot of rescue work with her animal Reiki, uh, her Sarah organization, I noticed uh, she had an article in the, I think it was in the Reiki News Magazine, it was somewhere that I saw it, where they actually started keeping note of statistical, statistically, 
when they she she worked with animals that were hard to adopt and so maybe had been there for longer and they would quite quickly after she did reiki sessions they would quite quickly get adopted and in fact successfully adopted too because sometimes they would get adopted and then it wouldn't work out and have to come back but they noticed a significant difference and so i know one of my other students who practices with rescues in moncton noticed that as well she began working with rescues and she would really focus on those animals that were unadoptable or that were having difficulty being adopted and she would notice that their personalities would shift they would become open to adoption and so on and um wow. noticed a big difference in that and, and you had an animal you worked with a, a big bigger animal a big great dane who was successfully adopted after you yes. worked with him and, and yes. he's struggling hadn't he yes yes he had um, yes. yeah yeah so, that must be an amazing feeling. Yes. He was happy to have the company also. Like he loved Lynn that works at the shelter. Yeah. So she was her sidekick. And, <laughs> but yes, I sat with Homer and he just loved it. Loved the attention, but the Reiki. Oh, and he was so big. I think he was 148 pounds. And <laughs> <laughs> imagine. <laughs> just oh, I did hold my hands in the Reiki and we don't need don't to hold our hands for animal Reiki but every single one of us does it <laughs> <laughs> oh I don't know why we all do this yeah. even though we don't need to no we all do no. including me <laughs> okay <laughs> and I went on his chakras and he just fell into this deep sleep and yeah, he was he, before the Reiki session. I had noticed that he would hear a car in the parking lot or hear somebody out moving around, and he was just very, of course, attuned in tune with that. Yes. And while I was giving him the Reiki, it's about 30 minutes of Reiki, and a car pulled in the driveway, and the door closed outside, and he didn't perk an ear or anything. He was just so deep, it was wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was really into it. And then he woke up and his eyes were how their eyes go roll back in their heads. They're just like so relaxed. And he was just looked around like, where am I? <laughs> horses do that too. Their eyes just oh. go straight back in there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we're doing Ricky for each other. I love it. Mm. I that's an amazing and you know something I I did communicate with Homer and I know that he told me like I'm perfectly happy staying here at the SPCA and being their mascot and I didn't know that he had become a little mascot for them at the time and then I did see a video of him in his new home and oh my yes. he's living his best life like he yes. is so appreciated and he's having he was doing zoomies he's having so much fun <laughs> yes he <laughs> loves them they love him like it's just like the best story ever. Yes. Yeah. I, I just love that. And not all the stories work out as well in a way, but maybe they do. And I think it would be okay for me to tell a story of an animal whose owner passed and the animal just really lost all its will to live. And it just continually escaped until it finally got struck by a car. And what's interesting is that between animal communication and animal Reiki, and you and I both know if a dog wants to escape and nothing will prevent them from escaping if we've had a dog that a foster, we're not a foster, she's my daughter's dog who got away on us right away. She just, they'll find an opening. And, but to be honest, when that dog did, when that did happen, I could really feel the dog's soul move to a place of peace where I did had done some Reiki for that dog and I couldn't get it to a place of peace. And I'm not sure if we would have been able to. It just really was that attached to its person, its caregiver. Mm -hmm. So animal, but this, but these sorts of things are really hard. They're really difficult mentally and emotionally on the shelter yes. staff mm. and for, yes. for people yes for people and one of the things <laughs> we were creating animal reiki that the animals were really specific about they let us know that they had that a lot of people who worked in shelters 
who do work in veterinary care, who work with animals welfare, farmers even, people who work with animals welfare. This is not a nine to five job. These people love these animals. They have a great deal of compassion, sometimes imbalanced empathy, sometimes too much empathy for the animals, and it's exhausting. And they're often working under very difficult circumstances, like you and I have become aware that financially the Fredericton SBCA is, is reaching out for assistance because they need help right now. And so there's things like this. So not only do you have all this mental and emotional turmoil with animals that are struggling or who've maybe been in very difficult positions and conditions, but on top of that, you have financial constraints and you have people mm -hmm. that don't, that maybe have very rigid ideas and don't appreciate the circumstances that that they're working under and so on, and maybe don't appreciate the nuances of working with rescue animals. I began rescuing dogs in my, I think I was 18, 19 when I adopted my first dog. And, and I had worked in veterinary with, in veterinary care. I was, I'd studied pre-veterinary medicine and worked in veterinary care. But in the end, I'm almost grateful I didn't go into veterinary because I do know that I would have struggled with over empathy and, and even moved into a burnout, which is very common for people in these situations. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that the animal Reiki energy was very clear with us on is that it brought in it brought in meditations to help us with compassion fatigue. It brought in meditations to help us re release things like guilt, grief, shame, blame, imbalanced empathy, and compassion fatigue, and things like that. And so can you tell me what you've noticed? And you can use the Reiki that you have with animals. There's nothing wrong with that. But when we went in and listened and developed animal Reiki, there were specific tools and techniques that were given to us to assist people in shelters because it is so difficult for them. And sometimes I get a little upset when our shelter posts about some of the difficult decisions that they have to make and people um, can sometimes make comments that are very unkind. And I realize what a tremendous strain our friends are in if they work in a shelter or a sanctuary um, or a veterinary or agriculture when they're working for the welfare of these animals. Can you explain what the difference you notice, like with some of the animal Reiki tools and the animal Reiki has its specific energy and where you think we can most help in what's the best way we can reach out with our Reiki and our animal Reiki and even just our physical selves? What's the best way to reach out and help the shelters, Krista? I think we can reach out and help by fundraising and mm -hmm. volunteering spreading the word on social media um <clears throat> maybe even supportive comments on social media yes mm -hmm. i have done that when there's if a negative comment has been made and that just people just yeah that's right and um when after another type of thing i have stood up and said i support this organization and you don't have to say anything bad about anyone just, just show that you support, stand up for the organization. And then some break to, to everyone in that situation, right? Because probably yes. people are saying negative comments because it's something in them that's being triggered. Yes, Maybe. people hurt people. <laughs> right. And animals. Yeah. Um, another thing that I have done is just send Reiki and surround the property of the organization with Reiki all four corners and it just happens like when you send the the distant Reiki symbol just yep. choo, 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 and just picture the organization the, the building the people that go in that bubble almost surrounded all the animals surrounded by Reiki and 
piece so that they, when they are in the building or enter the building, offer them like Reiki protection shield. <clears throat> I've also found the, the meditation, the forgiveness. Garden of forgiveness experience. Garden, the garden, <clears throat> garden of forgiveness experience has been very helpful for me personally, having worked at an animal shelter and being the person that had to make and do the hard decisions. And when back, when people, if pets aren't being, or our animal companions are not being spayed and neutered and it's up to the shelter care attendants to make decisions on behalf basically of the public not being responsible, yeah. that, that bears a heavy load. Mm. forever mm -hmm. <laughs> felt like forever heavy load and a heavy price tag because yeah. they're then spaying and neutering and spaying and neutering the puppies and kittens and expensive yes but when they were not being spayed and neutered and they were just producing puppies and especially kittens in our area there's a lot more cats that need homes than dogs um People would bring their pets into an animal shelter to be euthanized, or we would have to make the decision to euthanize. And the Garden of Forgiveness experience, when I did the animal Reiki, helped me so much. I had a recurring nightmare, not every night or anything, but I over the years, I've had a recurring nightmare. And after I did that Garden of Forgiveness experience, I did not have those nightmares anymore. And the nightmares were to do with having worked at an animal shelter with when they would get the cats in particular would get sick and yeah, it was just. And there were just so many. And you would not, have to pick homes. which one. Yes. Yeah. Oh, not that enough homes. Must've been just heart wrenching. But, yes. Yeah, it was. And, mm -hmm. but releasing that and doing what I can now to help find homes it's mm -hmm. very helpful yeah that's uh -huh. oh, my heart goes out to you Kristen you're not the first person I've had so many people who were just buried in we call it compassion fatigue and it's actually considered secondary traumatic stress disorder not post-traumatic stress disorder but secondary traumatic stress disorder and it's absolutely exhausting and can impact every area of your life and I was so grateful that 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 was so healing for you but we have had other people as well in that class who just it it changed their lives completely veterinary technicians and caregivers and animal rescue people and and you name it like it just really made a huge difference so I'm so grateful yes. about that and we're going to be actually ending our podcast with that today for people wonderful to, yeah who may be <laughs> struggling under some of that load maybe you're a caregiver of a human animal or a four-legged or winged or so on but maybe you are experiencing compassion fatigue and so yeah so I think just anything we can do to support. Now, say somebody wants to volunteer and they're an, a Reiki practitioner. Sometimes not all organizations know what Reiki is. We're very fortunate. You and I both went into the Fredericton SBCA and said, hey, I'd like to volunteer my Reiki. And they said, fantastic. Yes. Um, <laughs> not all organizations understand what Reiki is or how it could would help. What would you recommend somebody do as a first point of contact? And I know because you did on one of our Reiki shares, one of the questions that somebody asked was, I went in and offered Reiki and they weren't receptive or and animal communication and they weren't receptive to it. And you had a, an excellent advice. I wonder if you could share it with us now. I would recommend building a relationship with the shelter or whoever the person is. If there's one person in particular that is the community outreach person. So instead of perhaps just offering to go in and give Reiki, whereas people may not know what that is, you could just start volunteering. And there are many ways you can volunteer and you can infuse Reiki into um, your volunteering. Yeah, so whether it's fundraising or going into the 
animal shelter and cleaning litter boxes, walking dogs, fostering. Most animal shelters really need fostering too. And if you go in and build a relationship and stay consistent and show up when you say you're going to show up because they do rely on people coming into the shelter and you can um, introduce them to right yeah, I don't know the concept say. yeah just I know exactly <laughs> what you're saying you can come up in conversation yes like I also do right they might say gosh the animals are always so well behaved when you're here and it's oh yes. well yes doing my work in a Reiki bubble. What's Reiki? This is what it is. And it won't go where it doesn't have permission, but some of the an the animals seem to really like it. Or you can introduce, and I, I think that's excellent advice because not everybody is as open-minded yet, or it, not everybody understands what it is. I'll just go in and let them get to know you as a person. Yes. And I think that they will find... I'm sure with you, Pam, too, people tell me that they're, they feel calm when I'm around and I know they feel the same way about you. So they are going to pick up on that. The, the people are going to pick up on that. And then you can introduce them to what Reiki is and what you're doing. And it's just very gentle and it's all love and it's yeah beautiful. It really is beautiful. And I appreciate that. I used to go up on my lunch breaks when I worked with the Department of Agriculture because it was just around the corner and I wanted to take a walk anyway. So why not go and walk dogs? So I would go up two and three times a week on my lunch breaks and walk dogs for them at lunch hour. And it was just lovely. I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed the dog time. My own dog was at home, but I didn't have time to get home to him <laughs> and back to work in an hour, but I could get up to the SPCA. Oh. And, uh, and it was just wonderful. And I know that I would be a foster failure. In fact, we have a fifth dog right now because, <laughs> and I, my husband said, maybe we could just foster her. And I'm like, let's not even pretend that we would <laughs> at that. If she's coming here, she's coming here for good. And we all know that. Surrender. <laughs> just <laughs> surrender to. <laughs> One appointment to be spayed in, um, next week, which I'm so grateful for. She's only been here. Today is her ninth day. And it's just working out beautifully because, and what a difference. Like, I know what you mean about when you were fostering, how you wish you'd had Reiki, because what a difference. I've rescued dogs since I was 18. And what a difference bringing a dog in with animal Reiki and animal communication and being able to just communicate what you need to help them work on the issues. She arrived here messing on the floors and her previous people, that was one of the big issues. And her previous people, I don't have any, I don't have anything against people who need to rehome. Sometimes an animal just doesn't work in a certain situation. And the best thing that you can do is try and help that animal find a situation that it will work for. Baxter was that way. His people um, lived in a mini home and I've never seen a dog with this amount of energy that Baxter has. You've met Baxter. If I do not walk him two and three times a day, he explodes. <laughs> and I just think these poor people with busy lives and young kids in a mini home, mm. the, the best thing they could do was to find a place and a person whose kids had grown. So I have time to walk dogs twice a day or, and, or somebody here does. And, and so for this recent dog, he, she was constantly messing in the house within a day and a half, she stopped. Wow. And I know it's just the Reiki, the consistency, the animal communication was able to explain to her what we were hoping for. And then and then they always have free will, but she was just, I like it here. I think I want to try to do that. And she had been trained to go on pee pads. It wasn't her, this was where she was trained in an apartment with her first person. Like the second, people we took her from was either her second or third home. Mm -hmm. So it was, it, 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 but, but Reiki just helps so much with that. And so, yeah, I, I agree. This is something that can be really helpful. Whether you have mm -hmm. a Reiki or animal Reiki, animal Reiki gives us a few more tools, mm -hmm. but you can also use your Yusui Reiki as well with the animals. Let's talk about some fundraising events, Krista. And okay. 
recently, I attended a beautiful conference at the Omega Institute with three, four, three Hay House authors and Shelley Carr. It was John Holland, Rebecca Campbell, Anita Morajani, and Shelley Carr. And the conference was just life altering. But mm -hmm. one of the things that happened is John Holland is a very well known psychic medium. And he does these big mediumship events all over the world. And but he had a special dog that he the energy of the other side guided him to go and adopt this dog from an SPCA that was local to him in New York. And so he did. And then they had an inc incredible life together. And uh, I guess that's another thing we can do. I guess you mentioned that if you can provide a home to some of the animals. And so they had an incredible life together. But when the dog passed, he was devastated. And he thought, what can I do? The dog's name was, I think, Coda. And which is interesting because I had a very special dog to me named Cody that came from a shelter, <laughs> uh, which all my dogs come from shelters or rehoming. We seem to be very successful with that. Someday I said, I'll write a book about how we're successful with that. One of the big keys is get for a walk every single day, right. <laughs> like, yes. every day <laughs> without fail. Exercise <sighs> makes for a much better partner <laughs> and then apply copious amounts of Reiki and love and attention, but also have boundaries and rules and expectations and those sorts of things. So it's a balancing act. But he talked about how he decided to begin doing these mediumship events for his local shelter to raise funds for them because the veterinary expenses are going up through no fault of the veterinarians. Their drug mm. It's going up their hourly rate. Wages have to go up for inflation. Like everything has been going up. And so the budgets for these organizations are just being stretched so thin these days. The power is going up. The taxes that they have to pay for their facilities are going up. Everything. And so I thought, wait, I could do that. Why don't I do that? And so I gave some, I just asked Reiki, what could I do? And that event that I mentioned to you came just right out of the air beyond the Rainbow Bridge, a heartfelt evening with the Fredericton SPCA. And it's just an opportunity for me to help explain the mysteries of the animal afterlife to people and let them know that animals think about death very differently than humans do and also give them an opportunity to heal their hearts for having for any animals that they lost. And then I'll do the communication with the animals. And we did get a chance to run that for a kibble program at in a neighboring community of Harvey. We raised over $600 that way. We're hoping if this evening sells out, we could raise a significant amount of, of funds for the Fredericton SPCA, and they do need it right now. So we are yes. hopeful that we can do that. What are some other things that people can do for fundraising? You've got some people looking into some things. I do. I have some friends that are interested in helping our local Fredericton SPCA as well. And we're, I don't think they all know each other, but they all know, they you. know that <laughs> I love the Fredericton SPCA. One is a yoga instructor. One is an esthetician. One friend works at an animal hospital. And we all want to do something. So if we can concentrate our efforts together, perhaps, and have, I, I know the SPCA has said that third party events are very successful. Third party community events are successful. So it doesn't necessarily have to be at the SPCA. You can host your own events of whatever your thing is and raise funds. Party. Yes. Money yes. goes to the SPCA. Yes. Whatever your thing is, you can take the initiative instead of thinking, oh, that's too bad. I, What can I do? I'm one person. You can reach out. And people do want that sense of community to be brought together for a yoga class now that things have opened up since the pandemic. And the event that you're hosting in January I had two boxers that were both older and I lost them both in one month of each other. Ooh. No, I'm sorry. 
I lost them both in the same month in January of 2015. And it was devastating. I was in bed for four days <laughs> crying and I felt it was such a huge loss and there's no funeral. There is no, my, my husband was very empathetic, but he didn't really get it. Who do you talk to when that happens? There's not really any closure. You're just left to be really sad. So that's another thing that I really felt with the animal Reiki course that I was drawn to, which I didn't really want that to happen. <laughs> I don't want grief. Nobody. It's not something you really want in your life, but that was definitely something that I feel called to help people with because I went through the loss of my two boxers um, in 2015. I feel that I really, I understand how difficult it is. And the animal Reiki course, you do learn tools on how to help people with grief, mm -hmm. losing their friend. Yeah, it's so important. And that came directly from the animals. It was something that they wanted for their people, their caregivers. They wanted mm -hmm. their people to understand how they looked at it, where they were going, that they were fully engaged in every aspect of the cycle of life, including the death aspect of the cycle of life, they yes. they, they knew where they were going. They weren't worried about it. And we, they, they wanted us to help the people through people, the group. Yes. The people don't, not all the people know that's how the animals feel. So mm. I feel that it's very important with just to, to spread that word about with animal Reiki. Yeah, I agree. It was a very Yourself. crucial part of <laughs> course. And it's a hard part of the course. We all want Reiki to be love and light. And it is love and light. But the love and light has to be applied to the dark stuff. And so sometimes we have to acknowledge it, we have to be aware that it's there. And grief is one of those big things that, oof. and as you said that I realized that we had three little dogs, and we lost them all within six months of each other. We lost oh. in January, we lost or seven months and then we lost the last two within two weeks of each other and oh, it was just devastating and I know that when when we lost Cody CJ was still here but he's seen, so old he was older than dirt they, they were all rescues we'd rescued them all at the same time yes and I went out and got another dog right away because I was worried about CJ not having mm -hmm. a companion but they grieve too yeah, the animals grieve too, and and we do talk about yeah. that in animal Reiki as well, and and uh, so we brought this animal companion. CJ got along to, Im immediately with him, but then within a week, CJ was gone as well. Oh my goodness, it was hard. I'm so happy that I had Baxter here to help me through. And a few months later, Henry arrived, and then the others just kept arriving. Okay. After that. <laughs> Till you get to five. <laughs> My husband did the last one, though. At least it wasn't me. It's usually me. And <laughs> he, he, we wanted to help our friend. They just, they were struggling and she needed to get spayed and they just weren't in a position to do You that. have a farm. We have a farm and my husband, <laughs> we have four, what's five? If she weighs 10 pounds, it's right. Like There's a great small day. <laughs> yes. They'll all fit in the back of the, we had to get vehicles with a little larger back to them <laughs> so that everybody will fit but they still all fit and although the little one's small enough she can weasel her way oh. through the cage and she winds up on our lap and oh. <laughs> the reiki from the farm bus goes from durham to campobello <laughs> <laughs> all the animals or the dogs i should say not the horses of course but <laughs> i love that i love that. <laughs> what Working with all the different rescues, the SBCAs and other rescues, what are some unique challenges and rewards that you've noticed, Krista? Um, I also work with a little bit with a local farm animal sanctuary. I wanted to mention yeah. too, Lily's Place Aww. Animal Sanctuary. They're in Cambridge, well, Cody's, Cambridge Narrows area. And they have a lot of sheep, which I love sheep. Um, Aren't they Jamie. delightful? Yes, Jamie from the sanctuary, she said that sheep are just like big St. Bernard's. They're just so calm and 
gentle and oh, I just feel so them. good when you put your hands in their wool. They're just such delightful yes. animals. I love yes. sheep. Yes. And when you live in the city, as I do, just to go, they have an open house once a year and to, to see them in person. And it, oh, it's just, I love sheep even more. So I have done an online Reiki session with Betty, one of the sheep that was at their sanctuary. And that was wonderful. It was, um, I wouldn't say it's a challenge because it was online, but I think it was because I was new to animal Reiki. So that was the challenge of not being there in person. It was your first animal Reiki online session. So yes, yeah, that was a little, was... yeah, little nerve wracking. Mine was yes. the first time I did an uh, a distance online. Okay. Session. It was nerve wracking. It's okay. a lot of years ago now. It's about 13 years ago, but it oh. was <laughs> nerve wracking. Yes. Yeah. So I think some of the... Um, challenges are sorry I'm just going to take a quick look at my notes <laughs> <laughs> some of the challenges are the commitment that yeah. you have to be home you have to be around you can't go away for a weekend you have to if you're going to foster yeah you have that animals need a routine and they yeah. need the commitment if you're fostering puppies and you have if you're used having had one puppy is, um, can be a lot of work, but if you have several puppies, <laughs> or if you have a litter of puppies, that's it's a whole crazy. other that's, level. Yes. A whole other level. Yes. <laughs> I've never done that. I think, but I've seen people who have, and I'm just, Oh my goodness. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And you do get attached. So that's, um, what I was that's a reward. I was saving that for the end, but it's a reward and a challenge is that you get so attached and it is so hard to, to let them go. But if you keep an animal, which there's nothing wrong with keeping a Foster animal computer player. that yes. Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that. But if you are able to let them go and they find a wonderful home, then you're opening up another space for another animal that maybe is in a shelter or, or is in need to come in to foster. I was thinking and also, you have to have really clear boundaries around that. But I can see that if you're a person, if I wasn't such a big wuss about letting them go, it would be great because we know how to help them with some of the challenging behaviors. So that would make an excellent foster. Wow. Yes. Mm -hmm. And for fostering kittens and cats, there's certain times of the year that there are more kittens. And if you have a room that you can provide for a mother cat and her kittens, and you still have to be home, of course, or frequently to take care of them, but really the mother cat cares for her kittens quite well. If you have a separate room for them to be safely tucked away and the mama cat knows what she's doing. <laughs> Not quite as much work as a puppy. Right. <laughs> yes. That's a good point. <laughs> I also, I find it's good if someone is looking to adopt, it would be a great idea to uh, look at adopting a pet that has been fostered, an animal yes. companion that has been fostered. Because when you foster, you get to see, oh, the personality of the animal that will help them down the road, find a home. We've been very fortunate that several of our we did get henry straight from the spca and he worked out beautifully but many of our pets animals i, I do call them pets they they don't seem mm -hmm. to mind that term many of our dogs have been fostered beforehand and it is nice like we knew what the challenges were going to be with ellie from the start we weren't we didn't right. have, and even izzy we knew when she came they told us she's a runner. She got away on us. And sure enough, she got away on us too. <laughs> took three days to get her back. But we were aware of that and somewhat prepared. It would have been better if she hadn't gotten away, but it happens. Like I, I do not, I know that there, if there is an animal that wants to get away, <laughs> there is nothing that will prevent them from that. That's right. <laughs> they yes. will find a way. Yes. When I did foster, most of the time that I fostered was when my two sons were quite a bit younger. They are big dog lovers now. I find that when they're, they were little boys and growing up having foster pets here, that you they really did learn how to read a dog. There are different 
signs and cues that animals give off. Yeah. Uh, Body and language. my kids really, yeah, we all have large dogs now. <laughs> we all love our big dog lovers and they're dog lovers as I am for sure. <laughs> Lovely legacy to pass on to your children. Yes. Oh, that's so true. That is great. Yeah. That's really like you've really given them a part of what's very important to you. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else there, Krista? Or um kids uh no let no, you gave us a, I just you gave us a lot yeah, of good I yeah. wanted to say for challenges and reward is letting them go yes so it's for hard sure. for us to let them go but it's rewarding looking back now for me looking back it is so rewarding now that the emotion isn't quite there anymore of bringing a litter of kittens back to the shelter that had been adopted out. And it's, I have pictures of them printed pictures before, before we had iPhones and things of yeah. our foster kittens and puppies and adult dogs that I fostered. And just knowing you made such a difference. And I'm thinking yeah. if you chose to even go in and do work at a rescue, knowing that you're helping those animals go to the home that's exactly right for them. It it mm. does have its own reward, doesn't it? And yes. Yeah. Yeah. Something that I that occurred to me, like I mentioned with Krista, with you, if you wanted to hold a fundraising event with Animal Reiki, like I'm doing, you could also you could even one of the benefits is you could ask for may I have a donation receipt for for what I'm doing and just however the, they work it out. I don't know when I do the the fundraising event, like if it'll be for two hours or if it'll be the total amount raised. I don't know, but they said absolutely because mm. it is all being raised based on the event. And so then I'll be able to just, I'm not charging them anything, of course, but that way it'll be something I can apply to my taxes, which is help. Right. So that might be a possibility as well. Yeah. Yes, I don't yes, really know how idea. they'll work it out and I don't care, but I'll have yes. some sort of donation receipt that I'll put against my taxes, which will be lovely. So in that event, I would, in that case, if I did a fundraiser, then I would charge or ask for a donation. However much money I receive on behalf of the shelter, then I donate it to the shelter and they give me however that would work. Yeah. So I don't know for mine, are they going to give me like what I would charge for two hours or, right. or the total amount? I don't know, but it doesn't matter. They're no. actually putting on the event. I suppose if you put on the event and then gave them the money, right. I think they might make the donation receipt in total to you, but however they do it, it doesn't matter. There'll be no. some, I don't care. <laughs> I, no. would, I would do it regardless, Yes, uh, but that'll be nice to have because I, you are donating your time. And so it will be nice to have something to put against taxes for that. Mm. Yeah. I hope people hear this and take an initiative to do something in their community as well, wherever they live. And maybe we so want to charities. attend our event to get an idea of what it's like and feels like either oh. online or in person. And then you can go and design your own event based on that. Mm. So that's an idea too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Um, I'm just uh, going to share a neat story. I did do an event recently and it was so interesting because I was planning on talking about something completely different. But for some reason, one of my animal Reiki masters was in the audience, Amy, and she kept talking about, she kept, she directed the conversation around, but you haven't been successful with aggressive dogs or with aggressive animals. And I said, no, that's right. And I was very clear that animal Reiki has helped in so many situations, but to date, when animals have aggression issues, so far, I haven't been able to be successful with that. And in fact, with the animal communication, most of those animals that I've talked with have asked to be put down. They've shown that there was something wrong in their brain, either due to inbreeding or for a variety of other reasons, but that there was a misfire in their brain that would bring on this, this sudden and untriggered aggression. And it turned out 
the and it wasn't part of the plan. I wasn't planning to talk about that, but it turned out one of the beautiful people in the audience who has had a lot of experience with animals and they have a beloved dog who had the sporadic aggression issue and it really and they had made the very difficult decision and it is a very difficult decision um, my heart goes out to people who have to make that decision there's I have zero judgment because I don't know what else you can do if you've got an animal whose aggression is sporadic and uncontrolled and so on. And you're, I, I actually was told once, you're actually better off to have an animal that's always aggressive because you're always on your guard. It's the animals mm, are mostly yeah. okay, but then are sporadically aggressive that are the most dangerous because inevitably you will let down your guard. When oh. I had a dog like that once, unfortunately, and I wasn't successful in rehabilitating him. And that's a lot of years ago. And I felt that it was a failure at the time, but I realized that as an animal professional, it was important for me to have had that experience as difficult as it was. And it was difficult because that dog was perfect 99.9% .9 of the time. But when he would snap, he was uncontrollable and he was 110 pound hundred and between 110 and 120 pound German shepherd mm. was just as fit and strong and fast. And he attacked several things before I finally asked for help and was, it was recommended to put him down. And that, so I shared that story and how difficult it was for me, but also that I knew that a story like that showed up in our animal Reiki manual so that we could tell people that we're not able to sometimes the animal Reiki comes in to help the people around these difficult decisions. And we're not always able to fix every situation. And that was so helpful for that woman. And I'm just so grateful that I was able to be there in a place to help her because I know exactly what that feels right. like. Making that You had been through it. I've been through it. And mm -hmm. At the time, I had adopted the dog from the SPC. I'd had him six months, and they were six beautiful months, like six of the best months. He was, like I said, 99.9% .9 of the time, I could not ask for a better dog. But he did attack um, several other animals. He tried to attack a person. Fortunately, he wasn't successful. The door got closed, and the person got on the other side of the door and ran away. It was my roommate's brother and never returned until the dog was gone. He was really frightened of the dog and the dog was lunging at the door and there was nothing I could do. I couldn't even open the door until he was gone and until the dog stopped lunging, I could not get him out. As close as we were, I couldn't get him out of that mindset wow. like that he was in. And I knew I was in danger too, probably until his mindset flipped. I'm not sure, but there's a, there's a good chance. So I stayed safely on the other side of the door until several minutes after that person left and he finally calmed down and then went in. But yeah, and there were children in the neighborhood. And I knew that, and the, and I got, and it was, I had adopted him from the Fredericton SPCA and I got the most wonderful and compassionate advice from them. They told me, uh, I, took, I took him back and I said, look, this has been happening and it's happening with increasing frequency and I don't know what to do. Can you please tell me what to do? And they said, you have to surrender him back to us. They said, you have to understand that he was probably surrendered for a reason that not everybody is honest with us when they surrender the dogs. So we're not always aware of the reason but now that the and then they explained that animals like that can be the most dangerous because we let our guards down and it was the most heart-wrenching decision i've mm. ever had to make so they and so i i surrendered him and i just sobbed for the entire night i didn't go to work the next morning i went back to the spca and said i changed my mind i have to i don't know what i'll do i have to figure out something and they said no, it's too late. And I don't know if it was, but it was the right thing to tell me because I would have ripped that place apart to get that dog back. Right. And um, 
And looking back, I, now that I have animal communication, somebody asked me once, I was explaining that story in my animal communication class. And somebody said, did you ever go and reach out to him now on the other side and ask him how he felt about it? And I said, no, I haven't. Isn't that crazy? I've just felt guilty about it for my entire, that happened when I was 20. One, I think. And I just felt guilty for 20 some odd years. Right. It felt awful for almost 30 years. I didn't, I think for about 30 years, I just felt like a, a failure and that I'd failed him. And, and I, so I immediately after that class went in and connected with him. And I, I asked him the question that a lot of people ask in this situation, do you forgive me? And he just said, there was nothing to forgive. And he explained to me that my role in his life was to give him six good months because he'd had six very rough years in mm -hmm. his previous, he was six when I adopted him and he had six very tough years. And he said, I needed that six good months. And then I needed to go because I was going to hurt someone. And that wasn't my personality. There was something wrong in my brain. It would mm. switch and I would lose control. And then when I came back to myself, I would feel terrible about it. I didn't like who I would become. And he basically showed that for his first six years, he was just tied outside on a chain and nothing was ever done with him. Oh. And so he wasn't in a situation to harm people, but we had a life together. We, He went running with me every day and he came driving in the car and we went to lakes and swimming and played Frisbee and we just did stuff together constantly. And so he was in situations where he would snap and potentially hurt someone. And so he showed me that was my role for him was giving him six amazing months so that he could go and go gratefully knowing that the earth and the world had more to offer than what he had experienced up till then. And then he said, I needed to teach you this very difficult lesson so that you wouldn't be judgmental of other people's wow. situation. And you needed to realize that it's not always possible to fix things. And you're an animal Reiki, you're an animal professional now. And I am because I was a horse trainer before I was a Reiki practitioner, before I was an animal communicator, before I was an animal Reiki practitioner. And he said, you're influencing hundreds and thousands of people now you needed to learn, you're in a position of influence, you needed to know this. So that's why mm. he was in my life. So that wow. was, I'm sorry, I went into a lot more detail than I had attended to on that oh, story. Sorry. But I think maybe there might be somebody listening who needs to hear that that must be why and that's exactly what happened. Yes. With that event. Yeah. So I was grateful. And you, if uh, anyone is going through that, you do wonder why is this happening to me? And I can think of other situations in my life that I've had not necessarily around animals either, but uh, just different situations. Why is this happening? And looking when you look back, you can see you learn why things are happening. It makes sense. And I've actually Especially been in a situation, situation, yeah, as an animal communicator and an animal Reiki practitioner, where I've tried to help several people in a similar situation, I just wow. haven't been successful yet. And I'm not going to say that it will never happen, that maybe someday we will. And now I know that there's a dog trainer near me that works with police dogs and stuff. And if she had been around back then, I don't know, like I definitely would have tried her. I think that I definitely, if, if I ever am in that situation again, hopefully I'm not, but I would definitely try that and then make the difficult decision. But that wasn't even available back then. No. The style no. of training and. Yes. We knew. Internet so much. to find people. <laughs> you know, really. I know, right? <laughs> and we knew so much less then. And she may have been able to channel the aggression, but she might not. She might have said, you need to put this dog down. And it's, yeah, it's one of those things that I hope you're not experiencing if you're listening, but I hope that you if you do run into somebody experiencing it you'll be able to understand a little better or move into a place of compassion not judgment and not judgment that's one of the big things the animals told us is that we needed to move out of a space of judgment 
and into a place of compassion. And I think that's maybe why that when we do see unkind comments in social media around rescues and, and so on, I think that's why it is important to stand. I, I think that's judgment coming through. I think there's, mm -hmm. there's, but one of the things William Rand taught me early on, if you're judging others, it's because you're also judging yourself. He said, if you're, if you're pointing a finger at someone, there's at least three fingers pointed back at you. And mm. so judgment, he was very clear that if you are finding yourself in a place of judgment, you're not in a place of love. And you're also be aware that you're judging something in yourself, that this is triggering something in you. Right. You're judging. So judgment has been a very big thing for me. I didn't think I was judgmental until I started doing Reiki and Reiki showed me all the places that I was being judgy. Yes, I agree for myself also. Yes, especially with, with animals. If people don't treat their animals the way that I treat my animals, then, oh, they're not, like, they're like, not they doing a very good job. Or, they can yeah. do better. Yes, yeah. But um, the Reiki, animal Reiki especially, really learned to... No, just really help heal that judgment. I will say yes. something about judgment. When I was training horses, when I had only trained like two and three horses, I was and it worked really well. I said, oh, clearly, this is how everybody should train horses. If they would just train horses like me, they would be successful. But then when I got more experience, when I trained 10 and 12 horses and 15 horses, I realized, oh, that didn't work for all those horses. I had to dig deeper and learn more and do things differently and try new things. And then when I trained 50 and 100 horses, I realized, holy smokes, I, you're, you had to keep learning. Your techniques had to keep evolving. And it made me realize that, wow, it's easy to be judgmental if I've only had experience with one or two or three animals and it's worked. Yes. But as I get more and more experience, I realize that there's more and more to this. So yes, yes. Yeah, I love that. Krista, as we wrap up and before we move into our meditation, how, what else do you have to share? How, as you reflect on your experiences and how they've shaped your practice and your perspective on Reiki, can you tell listeners what you've learned and maybe also how they can get involved or support people doing this work even more? I would suggest doing a Reiki session for yourself. Mm. Um, yes, either online or in person. And I actually would even go a step further and suggest you do, if you're an animal lover, since we are talking about animals, doing an animal Reiki session, because that way it's for both of you or all of you, you can have, if you have five dogs, you can have <laughs> a Reiki session for yourself and your five dogs. Five dogs. At the same <laughs> time. Yes. <laughs> and they don't, and it, with the animal Reiki, they can come and go in and out of the room or, or the yes. stall. Like they, they don't have, they to, don't be have still. to be still. Yes. It's okay to walking movement. Yes. Your movement. Yeah. Moving meditations. Moving meditation. And, what do we call that? Like emotion. <laughs> That's it. Yes. <laughs> so it's okay to let, they don't have to be sitting right still beside you all the time. So I would suggest doing an animal Reiki session yourself and then a class I would really recommend a class and take it from there let Reiki learn. lead the way right yes one one step leads to another and I know it's definitely been that way for me but... yeah you do beautiful work and I'm really grateful that you've partnered with me with this event with the Fredericton SPCA and we had a table together at their trade show recently yes. uh, I know that sometimes That's I'm fun don't have time to do sessions or, or my schedule is booked out in advance. And Krista has agreed to do some of those animal Reiki sessions for people if they yes. wish. And yeah, yes. grateful for that and grateful for the work that you do. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Pam. <laughs> You're welcome. Guys, I'd like to move into a meditation called the Garden of Forgiveness Experience today. This is going to give you an opportunity to meet the Divine Animal Kingdom, which is like the brothers and sisters of the light or the enlightened beings on the other side. It also will let you 
meet a divine mother, which represents the energy of all divine mothers that you may relate to. It could be Mother Mary, Mother Teresa. It could be any of the divine mothers, the goddess that you connect with. And you'll be guided to lie in a bed of rose petals. While you're there, the divine animal kingdom, the brothers and sisters of the light, and the other illumined beings that support us as animals here on the earth will surround you. And the light of grace and the grace of forgiveness will shine on you to release and heal any burdens that you may carry and fill you with beauty and grace and love for the animals. This light will wash the light of forgiveness over you and the animals to heal any injuries that you've sustained to your mind, body, and soul during your life experience. And that includes releasing guilt, grief, shame, blame, judgment, over empathy, and compassion fatigue. So if you uh, have struggled with any of those, even if you're not aware that you've struggled with any of those, this will let them go for you today. So I'm just going to invite you to close your eyes and take some deep breaths and go ahead and activate your Reiki symbols. And if you have the animal Reiki symbol, you can activate that as well. And then just place your hands comfortably on your body and receive Reiki. I invite you to imagine that it's a beautiful, warm, sunny day and the light of Reiki is shining all around you. And that the beauty of the divine earth fills you with every breath. You cross over a beautiful bridge of light filled with illumined beings as the river of life flows under the bridge and sparkling light full of color shines on the water. You arrive on the other side of the bridge and decide to walk along the path that follows the riverbank there. The divine animal kingdom is lining the riverbank, drinking the living waters from the river. They greet you and welcome you. Peace is filling the air that surrounds you. And as you follow the path, Along the river, you come to another path with a white picket fence and a gate that leads to a beautiful garden. A divine mother greets you. You walk through the gate with her and breathe the sweet fragrance of the flowers. Peace and light and love surround you and she guides you to lie down into a soft bed of rose petals as the angels, the divine mother, the spirit of the earth, the divine animals and ascended masters surround you. The divine animal kingdom stands in a circle around you, shining blessings through you. As a brilliant light from the highest heavens shines directly upon you. The light washes over you and you simply receive the grace of forgiveness now. Not that anything needs to be forgiven, but this is a grace that comes from the source of all that is and is very powerful. So the light washes over you and you simply receive the grace of forgiveness. The light and grace of forgiveness washes over you and the animals and it begins to scan your body, releasing the cords and connectors to any injuries or spiritual wounds to your soul, your body, your mind, your emotions with the animals. And the worries, the burdens, and the power that the injuries have had over you are lifted from you and carried into the light where they are healed by the power of love all the way back to their original cause. And we're going to remain here as these are released on your behalf today. These are injuries to our body, mind, soul, spirit, or emotions.
Now the light of the heavens is shining on you and as you breathe in, the light within you is revealed, your wholeness, your beauty, your grace, your love, and your love for the animals and their love for you fills your heart and shines through you. And so you rise from the bed of roses and walk over to the circle of divine animals that surrounds you, and you realize that your light is beautiful like theirs. You step into the circle and take your place in the animal kingdom. Your light is like theirs. Your heart beats in the same rhythm as their heart and you breathe the same breath of the earth. Your spirit is free and clear and empowered. And the light of grace shines on you now. I invite you to receive the light of grace and we'll stay here for a few moments. I'd like to invite you to stay in your experience as long as you feel guided and when you feel ready to come back to take a few deep breaths bring your awareness to your eyes slowly open your eyes and return and just take some time to write about your experience if you would like i'd like to thank you for being here with krista and i today Thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you feel like you would like to help our SPCA, we will have a link in the podcast notes, but you might be inclined to reach out to rescue organizations in your own community. And we encourage you to do that as well. Thank you. And thank you, Krista, for being here with us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Thank you for being the light that you are in the world, my friends. Namaste.